The popularity of The Last of Us show has spread like some kind of horrible, world-ending fungal tendrils, but in a good way. I don't have a cure, but I hear that subscribing to Cinematica can ease symptoms for just about anything. Anyway, keep your head on a swivel while I escort you through 107 facts about HBO's new viral hit. This is 107 Facts About The Last of Us. Welcome to Cinematica, your new home for all things movies and TV. From Doctor Who to Harry Potter, we'll be going through all your favorites and favorites you didn't even know you had. Before we begin, we publish new videos every week. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. YouTube's been unsubscribing users from channels lately, so if you're a fan of us, please do us a favor and double check to see if you're still subscribed. It only takes a second and it helps us a ton here at Cinematica. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Number one. As you might have guessed, The Last of Us on HBO is based on the 2013 video game of the same name developed by Naughty Dog. The events of the first season directly follow the events of the first game. Number two. The Last of Us is actually the first show in HBO's history to be based on a video game. Number three. The Last of Us video game was directed and written by Naughty Dog's Neil Druckmann, and he's also involved in the show. He's credited as creator, executive producer, writer, and even directed the second episode. Number 4. When talks started about a live action The Last of Us, the original plan was to develop it into a film. The Last of Us movie was in the works alongside the Uncharted movie. Number 5. At one point, the film was all set to be distributed by the Sony-owned Screen Gems. Anyone familiar with video game movies will recognize Screen Gems for distributing all of those live-action Resident Evil movies with Mila Jokovic. Number 6. Unlike those Resident Evil movies though, Paul W.S. Anderson was nowhere near The Last of Us. Actually, Sam Raimi of Evil Dead and Spider-Man fame was in line to produce and direct. Number 7. This would-be movie adaptation of The Last of Us was first announced back in March 2014. Number 8. However, by 2016, the whole project entered development hell. At the time, Druckmann said that the last work done on the movie was a table read with a second draft of the script, and that had been a year and a half earlier. Number 9. When making the movie, Druckmann was constantly fighting off executive meddling. He said that there was a lot of pressure to make The Last of Us feel bigger and sexier. Number 10. Before long, this potentially bigger, sexier Last of Us movie completely fell through. The rights to the IP ended up lapsing and Screen Gems was officially out as distributor. Number 11. Here's where Craig Mazin gets involved. He's the co-creator and co-writer of The Last of Us alongside Neil Druckmann. Mazin is also known for his other successful HBO series, Chernobyl. Number 12. PlayStation first approached him in 2018. They showed him a list of their IP, asking him to pick one to adapt into a television series. Number 13. Well, Mazin was disappointed to see that The Last of Us was not on the list. He had been a fan of the game since it came out and said he'd even played through it about 12 times. Number 14. Within the first 10 minutes of playing the game, Mazin said to himself that someone is going to adapt it into a show or movie, but he didn't think it would ever be him. Number 15. Once Mazin learned about PlayStation's plans for a Last of Us movie, he suggested that a TV show would be a better fit for adapting the game's narrative. Number 16. Sure enough, Druckmann agreed. When making the movie a few years prior, Druckmann was actually struggling to fit the 15-hour story into a 2-hour film. Number 17. Mazin and Druckmann had a meeting, decided to make it a show, and pitched The Last of Us to HBO only a week later. Number 18. Sure enough, HBO was optimistic about their pitch. HBO announced that The Last of Us was in the early planning stages in March 2020. Number 19. The Last of Us was announced as a co-production between Sony Pictures Television, Naughty Dog itself, as well as PlayStation Productions. Number 20. The Last of Us is actually PlayStation Productions' first TV show that they've ever produced. Number 21. Druckmann and Mazin were named executive producers, with a few other names thrown in too. First, Carolyn Strauss shares executive producer duties. She was also executive producer on other HBO properties like Game of Thrones and even Mazin's own Chernobyl. Even Naughty Dog got one of their guys in there. Naughty Dog's president, Evan Wells, also was brought onto The Last of Us as an executive producer. Number 22. The Last of Us was produced in Canada under the name of Bear and Pear Productions. Number 23. A lot of hands were changing behind the scenes during these early stages. 
In June 2020, Johann Rank, who directed a number of Chernobyl episodes, was brought on as the executive producer and director of the first episode of The Last of Us. Number 24. However, by November 2020, Rank dropped out of the project from COVID-relating schedule conflicts. Number 25. While Rank was out, HBO was now officially in. On November 20th, HBO formally greenlit The Last of Us TV series. Number 26. Also, two more executive producers were added to the roster. Asad Kizilbash and Carter Swan, both from PlayStation Productions. Even more companies were getting involved. Word Games jumped on as a production company with Mighty Mint joining the project a few months later. Number 27. With all of these executive producers and production companies, the pilot episode of The Last of Us still needed a director. Well, in January 2021, Kantemir Balagov was announced as the first episode's new director. Number 28. However, he would also end up leaving, but due to creative differences. Although Mazin himself took over directorial duties, about 40% of the first 40 minutes of Balagov's footage remained in the final cut of the episode. Number 29. Pre-production on The Last of Us started in Calgary, Alberta, Canada on March 15, 2021. Number 30. All this time, Druckmann and Mazin had been writing away. Up front, they needed to figure out just how far to deviate from the original source material. While a number of lines from the show are taken directly from the game, Druckmann looked forward to the opportunity to unplug from Joel and Ellie to tell the story. Number 31. For example, unlike the game, The Last of Us show takes opportunities to go into character backstories and better explain the origins of the Cordyceps outbreak. The video game doesn't leave Joel and Ellie's side, so these points couldn't be explored within that format. Number 32. When it came to changing things up, Druckmann followed one key rule of thumb. If they want to alter the original story, they need a damn good reason for doing so. Still, that doesn't mean that he wasn't open to new ideas. When Mazin would approach him with new ideas, sometimes Druckmann would be all in, saying Mazin's idea should have been in the game. Number 33. Druckmann wanted to de-emphasize the action and gameplay sections from the original story in favor of the character relationships. In his own words, he sought to keep the soul of the game's story. Structure-wise, The Last of Us show would follow the game's pacing, moving area to area, introducing new ensembles of characters instead of following the same group throughout the entire show. Joel and Ellie are the key focal point. Number 35. Mazin also wanted the live-action version's violence to feel heavier when compared to the game. He says that watching a person die carries more weight than watching pixels die, and that after reloading a checkpoint so many times, you start to think of the enemies as obstacles, not as people. Number 36. Plot changes are one thing, but The Last of Us also alters a few details of the world and setting. For one, the show takes place in a different year. While the original game takes place in 2033, 20 years after the outbreak in 2013, the show winds the clock back 10 years, with the story taking place in 2023, 20 years after a 2003 outbreak. Number 37. Even the infection itself has a major difference. In the game, the cordyceps spread through airborne spores. For the show, the producers wanted it switched up so that the cordyceps spread through tendrils. Number 38. Why the change? Well, the team felt that characters constantly wearing gas masks wouldn't play well for TV. They also felt that these spores didn't feel as dangerous and that tendrils created more dramatic tension. Number 39. In general, Druckmann and Mazin approached the world of The Last of Us with the new context of an audience that's more than familiar with a pandemic setting. Number 40. Actually, they based the tendrils of the cordyceps off the weaving root structure of mycelium. They also used jellyfish stings for visual inspiration. Number 41. Make no mistake though, this is not a zombie show. Just ask Evan Bolter. He's the cinematographer for The Last of Us. Number 42. According to Bolter, nobody, from the cast to the crew, nobody was allowed to say the Z word because it was being filmed in Calgary. The producers insisted on calling the monsters the infected, not zombies, because it is not a zombie show. Number 43. Whatever you call them, Mazin insisted that the infected not be created with visual effects for fear of them looking cheap. He was dead set on using practical effects while making them look as close to the in-game versions as possible. Number 44. So he brought in some old collaborators from his Chernobyl days, Barry and Sarah Goer. They were tasked with creating the real-life infected. Number 45. 
To create the prosthetics, the Gowers also created and pulled from an entire reference library of everything from fuzzes, molds, slimes, and all different kinds of mushrooms of all different shapes and colors. Number 46. They also pulled some ideas from concept art of the game itself as reference. Number 47. In fact, original devs from The Last of Us were consulted on a number of the show's element. The game's art director, concept artists, and environmental artists all gave input on the show. Number 48. Even without getting the devs involved, The Last of Us already had a massive production team. The team consisted of five different art directors and hundreds of technicians, all determined to make The Last of Us look as good as possible. Number 49. While the vast majority of effects are practical, they did need to sprinkle a few visual effects in to pull the look together, particularly for the holes in the clicker's faces. Number 50. The fifth episode of The Last of Us actually features a mob of infected. The mob consisted of about 60 actors, with a team of 70 artists applying each of their prosthetics. Over the course of about three hours, the artists could apply prosthetics to about 30 actors. Number 51. As laborious as that sounds, this was only after the makeup team had become a well-oiled machine. Earlier in the production, sometimes makeup for the infected could take up to 8 hours before they perfected the process. Number 52. As for the bloaters, the suits themselves weighed about 88 pounds. Each suit was coated in gel to give it that wet, repulsive appearance. Number 53. Of course, the infected don't just stand around. Each of the infected moves were choreographed by Paul Becker and Terry Notary. Number 54. Notary specified he wanted the movements of the infected to feel unified, like a school of fish. He actually set up a boot camp of sorts to prepare the infected actors for their performance. Number 55. While the infected are a key element of The Last of Us, the characters are the true meat and potatoes. While the game version of Joel needed to be resilient for gameplay purposes, Mazin and Druckmann sought to make the TV version feel more middle-aged as a reflection of his hard life. They added deficiencies to Joel, giving him knee pain when he stands up and gunfire-induced hearing loss in one of his ears. Number 56. With the characters written, casting director Victoria Thomas was charged with, you know, casting them. She wanted the cast to feel true to the game without being ruled by it. Number 57. Due to the COVID pandemic, all of the casting auditions for The Last of Us were held over Zoom. Number 58. Joel is played by the Mandalorian himself, Pedro Pascal. Number 59. Just before he auditioned for Joel, Pascal had just come off the second season release of The Mandalorian. He actually needed permission from The Mandalorian's producers to do The Last of Us. While Pascal received a ton of offers, he chose The Last of Us to work with Mazin. Number 60. Mazin and Druckmann had been eyeing Pascal to play Joel for a while. When they approached him with the role, Pascal signed on within the next 24 hours. Number 61. Pascal reportedly made $600,000 for each episode of The Last of Us, making him one of the highest paid American TV actors today. Number 62. As eager as he was to play Joel, Pascal is not a gamer. He said that he didn't have the skill to play The Last of Us himself, so he learned about the game by watching his nephew play. Number 63. While Pascal found Joel to be impressive, he ultimately chose to distance himself from Joel's in-game version. He wanted to go into the show with a blank slate and see what the showrunners wanted to do with the character. Number 64. When doing Joel's voice, Pascal uses a toned-down southern accent. Pascal is from San Antonio, Texas. Once he learned that Joel is from Austin, he decided to dial back the accent so he wouldn't sound too country. Number 65. Also, while writers wanted to lean into Joel's middle age, Pascal's a little younger. Joel in the show is 56 years old, while Pascal is only 46. Number 66. While he obviously doesn't play Joel, Joel's original voice actor, Troy Baker, is actually in the show. He plays a character named James, who's also in the game. Number 67. Druckmann and Mazin thought it was important that Baker appears somewhere in the show. When they approached Baker to play James, Baker didn't actually remember the character from the game. Number 68. Nonetheless, once he got to look at the script, Baker was surprised by how important his character was to the story. He once joked that when Druckmann and Mazin initially reached out to him, he thought they were going to make him a clicker. Number 69. On the subject of clickers, the actors who played them are actually fans of the game. Also, the clickers are voiced by the same two actors who played the male and female clickers in the game. Number 70. Of course, Joel is only one half of The Last of Us journey. 
Ellie is played by Bella Ramsey. Number 71. Tons of women auditioned to play Ellie. Bella Ramsey had to beat out over 100 different actresses, all vying for the role. Number 72. When The Last of Us was still being developed as a movie, Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones was a frontrunner to play Ellie. However, by the time the story was reworked into a TV show, Williams was too old to play the character. Number 73. Funny enough, Bella Ramsey was also on Game of Thrones. When The Last of Us producers saw her audition, they actually reached out to Game of Thrones showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. They had nothing but nice things to say about her, so with their recommendation, Ramsey was in as Ellie. Number 74. Before her audition, Ramsey had never played The Last of Us. Like Pascal, Ramsey didn't want the game's version of the character to affect her performance. However, she did watch some gameplay on YouTube to get a sense of what the story's about. Number 75. To prepare for the role, Ramsey had to learn an American accent. She also cut 15 inches of her hair and regularly wore a chest binder on set. By her account, she wore the binder 90% of the time, something she suggested not to do. Number 76. Like Troy Baker, Ellie's original voice actor, Ashley Johnson, is in The Last of Us as well. She actually plays Ellie's mother, Anna. Number 77. Anna is another inclusion exclusive to the show. Druckmann felt that her character was important, so he added her into the story. Number 78. Druckmann had always wanted to tell Anna's story, well before The Last of Us was even in talks to get a live-action adaptation. After The Last of Us released in 2013, Druckmann wrote a short story about Anna, intent on turning the story into an animated short film or even downloadable content for the game. Number 79. It's nice to see the original voice actors make an appearance, and Ashley Johnson and Troy Baker aren't alone. Merle Dandridge plays Marlene, the head of the Fireflies. Number 80. Unlike Baker and Johnson, Dandridge also played Marlene in the game, doing the voice and even the motion capture. She's the only actor from the game to reprise the same role. Number 81. Druckmann and Mazin recast Dandridge as Marlene because she closely resembled the character enough to be put into live action. She did need one change though. She had to wear a wig for her role. Number 82. Joel's younger brother, Tommy, is played by Gabriel Luna. Number 83. Luna was offered the role only six days after submitting his audition tape. The Last of Us producers quickly knew he was the one. Number 84. Luna was so good for the role that the producers even let him contribute to Tommy's look. The Indian paintbrush on Tommy's boots. The First Nations crafted belt buckle. Both visual details suggested by Luna. Number 85. In the game, Tommy is played by Jeffrey Pierce. Pierce also appears in The Last of Us show as Perry, a character exclusive to the show. Number 86. Pierce got the role by reaching out to Druckmann to voice support and well wishes for the show. Sure enough, something came up that fit for Pierce to be a part of the cast. Number 87. Filming and production proper on The Last of Us started in Calgary in July of 2021. It was actually supposed to begin a week earlier. Number 88. Nearly the entire show was filmed in Alberta. Just about all of the US locations and even Jakarta, Indonesia were recreated there. Number 89. More specifically, Canmore, Alberta was used to replicate Jackson, Wyoming, while Calgary itself was used as a model for Kansas City, Missouri. Number 90. Some shots were actually filmed on location in Kansas City after the bulk of production was already finished. Filming caused a whole traffic jam and everything. Number 91. Filming and production finally wrapped in the early morning of June 11th, 2022. Number 92. Apparently, The Last of Us is speculated to be the largest TV production in Canadian history. The show was anticipated to pull in 200 million Canadian dollars of revenue for Alberta. Number 93. Druckmann was regularly on set for the first few months, traveling between Calgary and Los Angeles. Eventually, the traveling started cutting into his work at Naughty Dog, so he opted to work remotely for the rest of the production. Number 94. The Last of Us was originally supposed to be 10 episodes instead of 9. HBO decided to combine the first two episodes after their executives felt the original ending of the first episode wasn't captivating enough to keep people watching. Number 95. The original ending just cut from Joel burning the infected boy's body to Ellie in chains. HBO felt the ending was too grim, so they had the production team move up Joel and Ellie's first meeting. Number 96. The Last of Us's music score was composed by Gustavo Santolala and David Fleming. Santolala wrote the show's opening theme on his own, though. 
Number 97. Santalala also wrote the score to The Last of Us game. Number 98. The first episode of The Last of Us dropped on January 15th, 2023. Number 99. The premiere of The Last of Us managed to pull in 4.7 million viewers across all platforms in the US, both for HBO on TV and streamed on HBO Max. Number 100. Those ratings make The Last of Us the second biggest show to debut for HBO over the past 10 years or so. Only House of the Dragon has it beat. Number 101. In Latin America though, The Last of Us holds the title for the biggest premiere for HBO Max. Number 102. The show is particularly popular in Brazil. More than half of all online interaction related to the show came out of Brazil alone. Number 103. It probably has to do with the cast of the Brazilian dub. The Brazilian cast brought back the same actors who dubbed the original Last of Us game. Number 104. Viewership started strong and has only grown since the premiere. The 8th episode's debut was watched by 8.1 million people, a 74% boost from the series premiere. Number 105. The show has boosted the game's sales too. In the UK, after the premiere, sales of The Last of Us Remastered and The Last of Us Part 1 increased by 337 and 305%, respectively, from the previous week. Number 106. As far as what's next, Druckmann and Mazen have both said that they would move straight into the events of The Last of Us Part 2 if a second season was greenlit. Number 107. Well, a second season was indeed greenlit. HBO renewed The Last of Us for a second season on January 27th, 2023, less than two weeks after the debut. Reportedly, the writer's room has been plugging away in LA since at least February. And just like that, we've reached the last of The Last of Us facts. Did you enjoy our list? What facts do you think we missed? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, like and subscribe to see more great videos every week. And remember, Frederator loves you.